This is the range country, where the pounding hooves of untamed horses still thunder over mountains, meadows, and canyons. Every herd has its own leader, but there is only one fury. Fury, king of the wild stallions. And here in the wild west of today, hard-riding men still battle the open range for a living. Men like Jim Newton, owner of the Broken Wheel Ranch, and Pete, his top hand, who says he cut his teeth on a branding iron. Wild as Fury is, that's the one human voice he's learned to love and obey. The voice of the boy who once saved his life, Jim Newton's boy, Joey. a mutual trust and affection that everyone can understand. Especially a woman like Helen Watkins, Joey's school teacher and unfailing champion. No, down, let me get on you. And there they are together, a great wild horse and the only person on earth who can ride him, Joey and Fury. Open up. Good boy. Now I'll see you close it. Go on, close it, Fury. Good boy. Now I'll see how fast we can get to the barn. From the sound of those hoof beats, I'd say that was Joey and Fury. You know, someday he's actually going to walk that horse. Joey sounds like he's going to be lots of fun, doesn't he? He sounds silly to me. Why don't you go out and meet him, Betsy? Why should I? Don't be rude, Betsy. I just can't seem to get her to like me. Be patient, Bill. She still remembers her father. Sometimes I think it's hopeless. Well, just wait until after you and Alice are married a while, Bill. Hey, we got company! Paul? What's your name? You'll find out soon enough. Hi, Joey. Did you have a good ride? Yes, sir. And I taught Fury a new trick. Hello, Miss Helen. Hello, Joey. Gosh, Bill, I'm sure glad to see you. Same here, fella. Say, it looks like you've grown two feet since the last time I saw you. You saw the boy last week. <laughs> <laughs> well, two inches anyway. Joey, I'd like you to meet Mrs. Parker. And I hope you're going to like her just as much as I do. You see, we're going to be married. I'm glad to know you, Joey. I've heard so much about you. Thank you. You know, I have a daughter your age. I know. Oh, you saw her outside? Yes, ma'am. When are you two going to get married? Tomorrow night at my father's house in Capital City. Gee, that's swell. Betsy and I are going to stay at the ranch, Joey. Here? Mm-hmm. Till Alice and Bill get back from their honeymoon. What do you think of the idea? Oh, it's great. Just great. <laughs> I guess. Oh, you're going to have a lot of fun here, Betsy, and Joey's going to take you riding every day. Really? I, uh, I think you'd better go if you're going to get to your father's house before dark. I suppose so. Betsy will come for you just as soon as we get back. There's no hurry. Betsy. Goodbye, Mother. 
I'll try to be a good father to you, Betsy. You'll never be my father. Never. Betsy. Go on away, both of you. You don't care about me. My daddy was the only one who cared about me. <laughs> oh, Betsy. Let her cry it out. She'll be all right. Oh, Bill. Now you and Bill go ahead. Betsy will be just fine. Goodbye, dear. Now wire us right after the ceremony. Good luck, Bill. Thanks, Bill. Goodbye, Alice. Goodbye. Please take care of her. Don't worry. We'd better go, Alice. I didn't know she had a father. Well, her father's dead, Joey. He was killed in the Korean War. Well, gosh, that's too bad. But why does she hate Bill so much? She doesn't hate Bill. She doesn't really hate anyone. Betsy needs a lot of kindness from other children. I mean you, Joey. Be nice to her. No matter how strange she seems to act at times, please be nice to her. It'll help an awful lot. I'll sure try. I know you will, Joey. Those horses haven't been broken yet. Broken? Well, that's range talk for wild horses. They haven't had a saddle on them. But once they're broken, they become real gentle, and you can ride them. They don't look wild to me. Well, they sure are, but not like Fury. He's king of the wild horses. But Fury's broken. Oh, no, he's not. You were riding him. Oh, sure, but that's because we're pals. I'm the only one he lets ride him. Why? Because he loves me, and I love him. Fury's just a horse. He loves anybody, even me. Betsy, stay away from Fury! take you to your room, Jim. You'll feel much better when you lie down a while. Oh, don't cry. Don't cry, baby. Don't cry. Honest, Jim. I didn't do anything. I know you didn't, Joey. She wouldn't eat, huh? Had a crumb. Something awful must be the matter with that little one. If she wouldn't eat my apple cobbler. I think we should call Alice and Bill at his father's. No, Helen, they're on their way to get married. We don't want to disturb them unless it's something really important. Poor little thing. She's just lying on her bed, staring at the ceiling. We've got to do something to take her mind off things. Hey! How about a picnic? She's got to like that. Oh, Joey, that's a wonderful idea. How about it, Jim? Okay. A picnic it is. Yippee! Tell Betsy, Miss Helen. Well, why don't you tell her, Joey? Me? Mm-hmm. I think it'd be a good idea, considering what we talked about this morning. It would? Mm -hmm. Well, go ahead. We'll go on. I 
I think he'd rather wrestle a bobcat single-handed. <laughs> Come in. Feeling better, Betsy? I feel fine. That's twelve. Betsy? Well, what do you want? I'd like to invite you to a picnic. What kind of a picnic? Well, you and me and Miss Helen and Jim. We're going to Shady Grove. Miss Helen's gonna make a delicious lunch. Cold chicken and lemonade and strawberry jam and potato chips and gallons of ice cream. <laughs> oh, we can go hiking and fishing, maybe even swimming. <laughs> Come on, who do you say, Betsy, huh? There won't be any picnic if you don't go. What do you say? Well, all right. Gosh, thanks. Well, good night and see you in the morning. Would you like some more chicken, Betsy? Oh, no, no, thank you. I'm full. How about some more lemonade? All right. I'll go and get it. I'll go with you. Well, if I'd known you kids wanted more, I wouldn't have put the jug back in the car. Oh, we weren't thirsty then. <laughs> Come to think of it, I wasn't either. Bring me some, too, will you please? Okay, Jim. Having fun, Betsy? Uh-huh. Glad you came? Uh-huh. Thank you. Jim. Hmm. It's delicious. I think Joey's going to be a good influence on that little girl. It is good. Only one person I know makes it better. Who's that? Bill Adams. He does not. He can't do anything. I hate him. But Betsy, I only... I said I hate him. Today's the big day for Alice and Bill. Mm-hmm. A few hours, they'll be married. You know, we ought to call and congratulate them. Hmm. Good idea. I'm so happy for the both. Yes. Bill will make Alice a darn good husband. And Betsy a good father. He'll never be my father! Never! Betsy! Hey, Betsy, what are you doing? Leave me alone! You can't drive a car! I'll show you! Betsy, stop! Killed. I never thought she'd go this far. She was running away from something she couldn't face. Mm. I think I'll go in and see if she's still asleep. All right. Betsy. She's gone. She's not in her room? No. Well, she's probably just wandering around the place. I think she's run away. We'll find her. Oh, Jim, she must have run away. Well, she ain't around here, that's for sure. She can't have gone far. No sign of her. Pete, you and I will get horses and go cross country. Me and Fury can help. You sure can. You cover the roads back of the corral. Jim. I'm going to call Alice. <laughs> Will you relax, son? When is that Justice of the Peace going to get here? He's ten minutes late. Maybe something happened. Maybe he won't show up. He'll be here. <laughs> I guess I'm the most nervous bridegroom in history. Well, one of the most, anyhow. <laughs> It's the Justice. I bet he can't make it. Hello? It's for you, long distance. Hello? Alice. Alice, it's Betsy. She's disappeared. What? I I'm afraid she's run away. Oh, I'll be there just as soon as I can. 
Betsy? She's run away. I I've got to go back. I'll drive you. But the wedding? I'm afraid there'll be no wedding. Jim. Keep on looking. Betsy! Betsy! That girl's more trouble than an ailing colt. to try it. Why'd you run away? Because I wanted to. You've got a grudge against Bill Adams, so you want to hurt him. What if I do? You want to hurt him because he's not your real father. Well, Jim's not my real father, either. 
He's not? No, he's not. But he loves me more than all the real fathers in the whole world. And that's the way Bill would love you, if you'd only give him a chance. I know you think your father was brave, thoughtful, and kind. <laughs> he was. Well, so's Bill. And he can mount a horse on the dead run, too. Now, if you still want to run away, go on and run. <laughs> Don't cry, Betsy. Come on, we'll ride back to the ranch on Fury. You mean you'd let me ride Fury after, after what I did? Sure. He can carry both of us easy. <laughs> Please, Betsy. Everything's gonna be all right. You sit down, please. It's only Jim and Pete. No sign of either of them. <laughs> oh, God, it's all my fault. All oh, my fault. Please, Alice. What can we do now, Jim? We're going out again as soon as we get fresh horses. We'll organize a search party if necessary. I'll never forgive myself. That's Fury with both of them. Oh. She's all right, Jim. Nice work, Joey. Oh, Betsy. Betsy, Betsy, you're safe. And you won't have to run away anymore. What do you mean, Mother? Oh, Bill and I aren't going to get married. And it's just got to be the two of us together. But I don't want it to be just you and me. I want it to be the three of us. I want a father who's kind and thoughtful And brave and honest. Betsy. Can you really mount a horse on the dead run? He sure can. Joey, I didn't even thank you for saving me. You thanked me just fine. How about some vittles? Something about the art of chivalry. There isn't a horse in the state that can beat Fury. Ladies, tea and biscuits. 